Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to my little workshop. Today, uh, I'm going to do a video on pull ropes on these small engines. Uh, I'd say about 70%, maybe 80% of the time I see people start these engines, they grab it and they go, and you hear that clack, like that. That's not good on that rope. It's not good on the internals, it's not good on the locking gears. Um, it's really hard on these when you do that. You pull it out until you feel it engage, and then once it's engaged, then you pull it. Engage, and then pull it. Like that. So you're not straining the internals, you're not shocking that rope. This rope has a lot of static strength, or a lot of uh, linear strength, but the static shock on this, the, the jerk that you put on these ropes, it puts about twice the pressure on that rope whenever you pull it this way versus this way. Another thing you should do on these engines whenever you first get them is pull that rope out all the way and then take you a candle and rub you some wax on this rope. That wax, whenever you rub it on that rope, it'll keep dirt and debris out of the fiber or help keep dirt and debris out of the fiber because if you get sand and dirt in this rope, whenever this rope flexes, that little piece of hard material in there, sand or dirt or whatever, is going to move across these fibers and it's going to slowly cut that rope. It's like having a tiny little razor blade in there just slowly cutting the fibers. and It takes a while, but it will cut it. And the wax seals that. It seals it away from moisture and it also kind of lubricates it so you don't have friction whenever you pull this rope and it reduces the friction because if you pull the rope up this way you've got a lot of fl friction on that grommet that it goes through if you don't pull it dead straight you've got a lot of friction so that wax helps lubricate that rope and it'll make your pull ropes last longer but uh, if you do sit there and yank on those things like that you're gonna wind up messing up your cogs in there and I'll show you that here in just a second what I'm talking about so let's go on in the shop and I'll show you how to replace a rope. Okay, now we're back in the shop. Whoops, and we're knocking over the camera. Okay, this rope here that I'm using, and this is a 212 Predator uh, pull cap. And this one actually came off of uh, Lucy, Brad's cart. We just swapped it out because uh, we were out here doing a lot of riding and his pull rope was about to break. So we went ahead and uh, just swapped the cap because I have extras. Anyway, what I'm using here is a SGT Knots Polydicron starter cord, number four size, and I order it 25 feet at a time. And it's about eh, 10, 15 bucks for 25 feet, so it lasts me a little while. Um, I could do five, six engines with this depending on uh, the application and how long of a rope I want to put on there really good rope um, since I've been using this and using this as a replacement I've never had any problem with it snapping if I use it correctly and of course wax it okay now what I do with this type of pull cap now the Briggs pull caps um, they have a lip around here so when you do it instead of running a screwdriver through here to lock it um, I just take a pair of vice grips and just clip them on this spool in the outside. Now what I was talking about whenever you yank it, when you pull this rope, if you look right in here, you'll see a blade come out. See those two metal blades that come out? That is what engages your starter. And when you yank it and it torques like that, like I was showing earlier, what it does is it puts a heck of a lot of strain on these tabs that come out. And it can actually bend these tabs the wrong direction and then you've ruined your cap. You're also putting undue strain on your spring and uh, it's just not good for them. Now I'll show you the issue with this rope. Most of this rope is good. 
until I get to right here, and then it's about ready to break. Now, one way I could fix this when it's at that point is I put my screwdriver in here. I can grab this with my needle nose pliers, pull the rope, tie a new knot, lose three inches, and then I've got another cord. And the way I tie my knots is I do a granny knot, just like that, just a regular granny knot, and then I go through a second time, so it gives me a little more bulk, and then I pull that down, lock it, burn it, and where I cut and burn, uh, while it's still molten, I roll it, the molten rope over on the edge here, and it locks it in. But we're gonna replace this rope. I'll show you how to do this. So I roll it out as far as it'll go. Like that. Now you see my knot hole is lined up with my guide hole. So I'm gonna pull this out. And with that screwdriver in there so I don't lose my spring tension. I'm gonna clip it. Uh, yeah. Just clip it right here. And then pull the old rope out. Just like that. And uh, you can see you can't access the rope here. That's just a press in cap. So if you take a sharp object and you flex it, that little cap there comes out. You take your needle nose and you can remove the rope from that. Just like that. We're going to open my new package of rope. And when I'm done here, um, I s usually keep an old MIG spool laying around. And what I'm going to do is drill a tiny hole here so I can put the end of the rope in and I'm going to spool it up on this spool and then hang it on the wall and then it's not going to get in the way, it's not going to get all tangled up. So we'll just take us off a few feet of this new rope and since we had a static issue with this rope, I'm going to add a little bit more length. So there's the full length, I'm going to add me another foot of rope. Cut it. Should have had this out of my pocket already. You can see how that frayed out. We're going to heat that up. Of course, the end of that poly rope, and now the end of that rope's not going to fray out. So when I store it, I've got good rope. And we're going to scorch the end of this. I'm going to run this in through here, through the handle, push it out, and do that little knot I just showed you. The double twist. We're going to push it up. Pull it tight with a pair of needle nose. Okay, now we're going to cut it again. See how it frayed out right there? We're going to heat that up, let it melt. And then take my metal and my lighter and rub that molten plastic down in and it locks that knot in. I'll show you what it looks like now. See how that's melted and locked in there? Pull it down in the handle. Now, sometimes you can just take and feed this in there and it'll pop through. 
There you go, just like that. Now if you have issues with it popping through, take a piece of baling wire and feed it through like I did the rope. And then you'll take that baling wire and stick it through your wire or your, uh, your uh, rope, fold it over, give it a twist, and then you can pull your pull rope back through. But we don't need to do that here. We'll do our double loop knot. Pull it down with our needle nose, cut it, melt that little bit of a fray, and then we'll lock that knot in. Okay, and we'll rub that plastic down on there. And we pretty much just welded poly rope. It's just like that. Pull it back up. Seat the knot in there. Remove the screwdriver and let it spool back up slowly. And there we go. Brand new pull rope. Now all I gotta do is pull this back out, lock it with a screwdriver and throw some wax on that rope. It's good to go. So there you go. There's the easiest way I know to replace a pull rope. Um, I've been to uh, a shop years and years ago back when I was in my early 20s and uh, the guy was working on a rotor tiller for me and he told me to hold on a second, you know, he'd try to get it started, and I'm like, it, it won't run, it needs a new carburetor, carburetor built, I don't have time for it. And he sat there and pulled on that thing and did the yank where it snatched and static that cord and broke my pull rope. And then it took him two hours to replace the pull rope because he was sitting there fighting with it, um, you know, trying to poke it through and everything, and I'm like, guy, if you'll just hand it to me, I can take a piece of baling wire and I can have that rope on there in two minutes. And he proceeded to tell me how many years he's been doing it and how many years he's been doing it that way and it's always worked and he's trying to fish with a screwdriver to get it in there. And I'm like, man, I'm sorry, you've been doing this for 25, 30 years and you've been doing it the hard way for that long. And I finally got mad. Um, told him I was done with him. I wasn't going to pay him for what he did because all he did was tear my stuff up and didn't fix it. And uh, I went and replaced the pull rope in just a couple of minutes. And uh, he got really mad because he'd been doing it for 25, 30 years like that. And he was doing it the hard way. But there you go. There's the easy way to do a pull rope. And uh, if your pull rope does snap, I always run this out as tight as I can get it and then back off about six turns and put the pull rope on. And if I have the pull rope too loose, you can always pull extra rope out like this, pull the rope up, and now you see how it is here. I can take the rope and hold that cap and go around an extra turn on tension just by doing that and I just added an extra turn of tension on that pull rope without readjusting anything let me get it up here there we go and now I just pull that out and now I have an extra turn of tension on that. That easy. These pull ropes are not rocket science. They're not that hard to do. You shouldn't be fighting them, and it shouldn't take you that long to do them. Anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful, and uh, I guess we'll see y'all later in the holler. Bye.